when I was in seminary, we had this, uh, there was an optional course that we could take in seminary. And a lot of people took it. It was very, very popular because it was absolutely useless, but the professor was a very, very easy marker. So it was just an option that you got to take where if you turned up, fine. If you didn't turn up, it made no difference whatsoever. Um, and it, was, it actually could have been and should have been a really good and interesting course, but just the way it was done wasn't ideal. So it was nicknamed Art in the Dark. So we'd see pictures of maybe the side of a tomb or the lid of a tomb or some monument that had been exposed to 2,000 years of acid rain and um, their little, you know, bumps on it. And you'd look and he'd say, well, obviously, this is a, a second century tomb in Armenia. And uh, as you can see, there's a representation of the Last Supper. And you'd, if, you know, I mean, it, 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 I mean, I think religious art is actually fascinating, and I know very little about it. I should know more, but uh, I mean, it, it could have been, it could have been a really, really good optional. But I, I remember then doing the exam, and there wasn't even a lot to study. It was very hard to write, take notes, or anything. Because when you see this rectangular stone, just like the one we saw before it, that's actually the Last Supper. How, how do you, how, how? Anyway, so for the exam, he'd show you a picture, and he'd say, "Describe what you see." So, uh, it's uh, it's one of the um, that's one of the apost saints saints saint yes it's one of the saints from the early church very good very good very good and which saint is it uh, it's probably one, one is it a mar not a martyr it's not a martyr no it's a uh, a uh, a dog doctor like a, doc, a, doc, a doctor a doctor of the church and then I got stumped and he said yes and, and who, who which doctor of the church is it and I'm like and then he starts <laughs> just keep in mind it's just the two of us in the room and he, so he, he sat, I, I don't know who the saint was we'll, we'll take John Christum considering him today and so he goes John John and I say J John and he goes Chris John, St. John Christ, yeah, exactly, exactly, bravo, 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 carissimo. And, and then, he said, then he said these words, I'll never forget the exam. He said, guardami, sono il buon pastore. He said, look at me, I am the good shepherd. I will guide you through, right? And the reason that this, this came to mind is uh, we heard something in, in, in our reading today, which I think a lot of us can kind of skip over and maybe not really notice but it says like that God wants everyone to be saved he wants everyone to be saved and reach the full knowledge of the truth God wants everybody to be saved we kind of have this almost opposite version of God where he's waiting for you to fall and then he takes note of that and he will never ever ever forget it it's this kind of idea that as soon as you mess up God sees that all the hundred things you get right, he doesn't really care about those. But it's, it's the, the things you mess up, he just takes a note of them and he'll never forget. And we kind of forget that that's, that's, that's not what the Gospels say. It's not what the saints believed about God. It's not how he reveals himself. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. Not, I, I mean, he, he's a, a judge as well, absolutely. But... Again, not, not in the human sense. Uh, like, like judges in, in, on earth can be corrupt. They can be bought out. They can only be aware of half of the evidence. Uh, I've just heard a couple of cases recently of just horrific stuff that, 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 that happens. But he is the, he's the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep. God wants everyone to be saved. So rather than God sitting there taking note of all the mistakes, trying to get us to fail, he's doing the opposite. He's taking note of all of the good and trying to get us to pass, i.e. to get to heaven. Now, that doesn't mean everyone gets a free pass and God doesn't care about sin. Sin has very, very serious consequences and far more serious than we can probably ever imagine, especially, especially public sin, because it affects my family, it affects my, my relationships, my wife, kids, whatever it may be. Like if I have a, some sort of a, a sin that, 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 that causes scandal and hurt and pain, that continues to reap bad fruit long after I'm gone. 
So our, 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 our lives are, are so important, our decisions are so important that we get our respective vocations right is so, so important because that continues to bear fruit, positive or negative, good or bad, after I'm gone. So sin is very, like, we're not washing over, pretending it's nothing just because God is trying to get us to heaven. God's trying to get us to heaven, but he's, he's, but he's well aware of the full facts. So, but he's on our side. So he's like a father on, on, on the sideline, you know, urging us on, going, yes, you can do it, son. Come on, one more, one more. Okay, you got knocked down, get up, get up. You got this, you got this, you got this. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jump for the high ball. Jump for the, jump for the high ball and up you go. You know, and like urging us on rather than you dropped that ball. You'd, I mean, you clearly dropped it. That was your opportunity. You know, you were down a point now. That was you. That's all on you. That's... Okay, that was, a, that was a pass, whatever, yeah, it worked, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, see, there, see there, you dropped it again. You see, this, it's like, as soon as, jumping on the negative, that's not what God does. That's not what God does. Now, two little details. Tie that into the gospel, say, the centurion, the centurion was a Roman, okay? They're the occupying force. They were not liked by the Jews, okay? Like, it's like in Ireland, a red coat, that's effectively what the centurion was. So they were a foreign force that came in and took over the Holy Land. So they were not liked. Okay? Now a couple of things, that obviously this centurion is quite exceptional. Obviously, his servant, what nationality was his servant more than likely? Well, Jewish. You know, a Roman soldier, Roman centurion, isn't going to, doesn't have Roman servants, but more than likely Jewish. So he actually cares about this Jew, which is good, and he actually built a synagogue for them, which is great. So he's an exceptional centurion, but at the same time, he's a foreigner, he's a pagan, He's a non-Jew, and he's part of a, an occupying force. And Jesus says, I tell you, not even in Israel, so not even amongst the Jews, have I found faith, faith like this. I guess that's, that's, a, that's a huge statement, because like, the Jews are the ones that have this particular res, re, revelation of God. Uh, it was the Jews that God led out of slavery and all of the manna and the crossing the Red Sea and all the various miracles and so on were giving them the Holy Land back. All of this. Uh, so they, they received this particular revelation of God, not the Romans, not the foreigners, the Jews. And yet, this man excels them in faith. So you see, you see how, how the Lord is looking for, for the good in everyone. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, so as Catholics, in our Protestant brothers, even you know, in, in our Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, like non-Christian religions as well, the Lord is looking for the good in them. He's looking for the good in them and urging them on. Now, as I say, sin is still sin. It, it, we don't get a free pass. But the Lord is on our side. Second detail, if I may. For there is only one God, and there is only one mediator between God and mankind, himself a man, who? Christ Jesus. Okay, so only one mediator between God and man, so God and us, and that is Jesus. So Jesus is the bridge between God and man. Okay, now this line is often used from uh, Paul's letter to Timothy to prove via scripture that our devotion to Our Lady is exaggerated, that we're making her a mediator in some way, and that that's against scripture because the only way to heaven is through Jesus, the only mediator between God and man is, is Jesus. End of story. Okay? So how do we answer that, or how do we understand this line of scripture, and yet, as I say, we have, you know, we pray the rose, we have devotion to Our Lady. Uh, how do we tie these in? And I guess when I'm thinking of this, I'm thinking maybe of a, a Protestant brother of mine, not in the flesh, uh, but I'm thinking, if, if I had a Protestant here, what would I say? Um, and I think it's very interesting, if we look at our own experiences of faith, how did I come to the faith? Was it maybe through you know, a good pastor, a good priest, uh, a good grandparent, or a good parent? So they lived the faith, and they showed me that the faith is it's life-giving, it's, it's beautiful, it's, uh, it, it enhances my life rather than just gives me extra rules. So someone, someone stepped in somewhere in my life and showed me that Christ is worth following. Okay, so in some way they, they sort of, you know, mediated who God was. Through them, you know, that's what a mediator come through me, by means of, by means of this other person, we come to a, a, an understanding of God or a greater knowledge of God. But is Granny or the local pastor or the local priest in any way a threat to 
Christ's unique mediation. No. In fact, if anything, if they're doing their job right, they point to Christ's unique mediation. So the problem is no, no one is trying to take, nor, nor are we with Our Lady, uh, trying to take away this, u- this unique place that Christ has of being the one mediator between God and man. That's Jesus. But the question is, as such, how do we get to Jesus? Not, we're not kind of skipping Jesus going straight. You can, you can talk straight to the Father if you wish, but no one come to the Father unless this, unless, this, unless, unless, okay. So all Our Lady or the saints or any devotions we have don't uh, take away from this unique mediation between God and man in Jesus. They enhance it, they point to it. Even if we call Our Lady Co-Redemptrix, which is a theological discussion ongoing at the moment, which uh, I, mean, I, would, I would agree with Our Lady with the title of Our Lady as Co-Redemptrix or Mediatrix, an advocate, Mediatrix. Because again, she mediates what? Well, she, through her, Jesus comes to us. So then through her, the source of all grace comes to us. But does this in any way threaten Jesus' unique mediation? Absolutely not. In fact, if anything, it just enhances it. It shows us like Jesus was truly human. And yet, like, truly God coming through her, a human being prepared from all time, but prepared in the, in the divine mind of God that through her, the second person of the, of the Holy Trinity will, will become man. But like in, this in no way threatens Jesus. In no way at all. In fact, if anything, you know, Our Lady keeps drawing us back to who? To Jesus, in order that what? He may draw us to the Father. So these, these things aren't, they're not contradictory. There's only one mediator. Absolutely. 100% agree. That's Jesus. Absolutely. But how do we get to Jesus? You know, well, the lives of the saints show us how. You know, St. Teresa's little way, uh, St. Faustina's uh, understanding of God's mercy. You know, all, these, all these things enhance and help our spirituality. They don't threaten Christ's unique mediation. Okay. So, in all of this, God is on our side. God is urging us on, rejoicing over us. Even the prophet Zephaniah says, he rejoices, he dances with joy over us. So he's on our side. And all of the hosts of heaven, the angels, the saints, and our blessed lady, they too are urging us on and cheering us on and praying for us and interceding for us. And their role doesn't threaten Jesus in any way because we all hope to be transformed into this mystical body. We hope to to be this mystical body as we truly are, but in a much more perfect way in heaven. So let us rest assured in these beautiful words of Scripture. He wants everyone to be saved and to reach the full knowledge of the truth. For there is only one God and there is only one mediator between God and mankind, himself a man, Christ Jesus, who sacrificed himself as a ransom for them all. Amen.